What is up, Flutter devs? Welcome to 2022. As is usual on this channel, we're going to go over what was accomplished in the previous quarter with Super Declarative, preview the upcoming quarter, and really talk about the year at large. And if you're wondering why I'm dressed like a redneck Batman, we'll get into that in the second half of the video. So let's see what happened over the last few months and where we're going from here. All right, welcome to 2022. Let's start off with Flutter processing. So early in 2021, I said that I was going to port processing over to Flutter. And for the most part, I have accomplished that. Over the last quarter, Q4 2021, I only had a few videos come out. You can see them here. So I, I fell quite short on the video front. But what you can see is that the videos that were produced, what we created with processing was actually an attempt to apply it to some real projects. These all, uh, these experiments or exercises came from the coding train. So I, I can't claim credit for actually coming up with the exercises or the code, but we did prove in those videos that these things could be created using Flutter processing. So we proved out a lot of the APIs. In between these videos, I also added a bunch of new APIs to Flutter Processing, APIs that I felt were too simple or just too high in number to be worthy of videos for every one or every little group of them. Most of the 2D rendering processing APIs are now ported to Flutter available in the Flutter Processing package. I was hoping that I was going to finish Flutter Processing in Q4. I didn't quite get there. So now in Q1 of 2022, my hope is to finally put a bow on this and then be done with it. I do want to leave it in a state where people feel empowered to use it. This was at least part of what I did throughout 2021. It was a rather lengthy project, so it'd be nice if somebody made use of it. So I might create some kind of web presence for this, some way for people to find it and to learn how to use it. But in any event, by the end of Q1 2022, I do hope to have Flutter Processing totally wrapped up. Now, this was your favorite video on the channel over the last few months, the Flutter Flame War video. For those of you that didn't watch this video, this was me challenging the idea that Flutter should be an application framework. I don't think Flutter is about applications, and I certainly don't think it should ever be a framework. If you hadn't had a chance to go watch this video, the first half is me dealing with specific comments from Twitter. The second half is me talking about from a kind of philosophical and UI revolution perspective, why Flutter should not be an application framework, why Flutter should be a portable UI toolkit. That brings us then to Super Editor. So for Super Editor, I was really hoping to have mobile support shipped in Q4 of 2021. Unfortunately, that is still in progress, but we are much closer. In fact, I have some code up for review right now that adds nominal mobile editing support at the document level. So we are getting close. We are very close to being done with mobile support. Therefore, in Q1, I expect to finish that. And I also hope and expect to implement undo and redo support in Super Editor as well. At that point, once we've accomplished those two goals, we can say that Super Editor essentially supports every platform, at least at a nominal level. Android, iOS, web, Mac, Windows, Linux should all run Super Editor, though you may find some discrepancies between platforms. If you do, of course, file an issue with, with reproduction steps. And then with undo redo, that's a pretty important feature for any kind of rich content editing uh, we don't want to go back to the early 90s or late 80s where you make a change and you're stuck with it. So that's a really important feature in practice. If we have that done by the end of Q1, then Super Editor will be in a pretty good place for many of you to use it in production. There are already some companies using it in production. They're just using it in rather narrow use cases. Uh, that version, uh, now we may do one version with both of these features, or as soon as we get mobile shipped, we might release the next version of Super Editor just with mobile and then do another release with undo redo support. 
We'll figure that out when the time comes. But that's definitely a focus for Q1 of 2022. Now, I also told you in the previous quarterly review that I was planning on starting an open source dev agency, which now brings us to this badass, also ridiculous costume that I'm wearing, which is the introduction of the Flutter Bounty Hunters. Some of you may have already heard about this. I announced it on Twitter. I also put out uh, a survey for those of you who would like to possibly become Flutter Bounty Hunters. I'm also, I've published some proposals for Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter projects. So this is already in the works a bit now, but I'm officially announcing it on this channel at this point. Here's the idea about how Flutter Bounty Hunters works. Let's say that there is some kind of tool out there that would be useful to the community. In fact, it would be useful to, let's say, a group of companies. So here are some companies that are building various apps in various business verticals, and they really wish they had this tool. Super Editor is a great example. The companies that are using Super Editor are not in the business of selling rich text editors. They're, those companies are working in a number of different areas, but all of those areas need rich text editing. And this can be true for all sorts of tools, whether it be event buses, whether it be databases, various UI widget sets, visualization tools. There are many tools and cases where a number of companies would really love to have the tool, but those companies aren't in competition with each other, which creates this very interesting opportunity where those companies can come together, kind of agree on a set of features for a tool that should be implemented, let's call it a milestone. So that little blueprint right there is a milestone. And then in come the Flutter bounty hunters, contract developers who come in and design and build that milestone professionally, meaning as a paid service. My hope is that this business model will incentivize the creation of well-designed, robust, holistic solutions in the community. The same way that, for example, the Flutter project has certain principles like embrace the yak shave, which means solve the whole problem. Don't just solve this little piece here or that piece there. Don't solve the easy 10% and leave all of the complexity for someone else to figure out. If you're going to sit down and solve the problem, then solve the problem. But that is a tough principle in the typical world of open source because the typical world of open source is all charity. The problem with charity is that eventually you'd rather spend time with your family than go deal with angry people in the issue section of GitHub, right? Open source projects tend to have a very small number of developers working on them who give nights and weekends of their time for free. The issue is that does not usually scale. Those projects tend to fall apart. They often never reach their potential. They often don't solve the most interesting parts of the problem. And my hope is that by bringing a business model to open source development, we can actually build robust tools for the entire community while also solving the specific problems of a number of companies that have an interest in that tool. But here's what I need from you to get there. First, I need your help locating the companies that might be interested. If we can't find funding sources, then there obviously is no business model. We can't build things without funding to build those things. So I'm first looking to locate the companies that understand that there is both a direct interest in funding these kinds of tools for themselves, but also an indirect interest in that as we build a more robust Flutter and Dart community, as PubDev becomes a place where very sophisticated and capable packages are the norm, well, then the safer any company will be that bets on Flutter and Dart. You know, we are all subject to the intricacies of the open source community when it comes to Flutter and Dart. So if companies invest in great tooling, then they have access to great tooling. And of course, companies that 
invest today will allow other companies later to use those tools without necessarily making the investment. But similarly, companies that invest early today, when other companies come along later and need to fix bugs or to build new features and they invest, then the companies that invested today will get a return on that investment later. So it's, it's helpful in both directions, both for the early investors, the people who invest early and the people who invest later down the road. But it begins with finding these companies. Then, of course, we need the team of bounty hunters. I already have some people that I've put together for this team. I've also sent out a survey. You can find it at Flutter Bounties on Twitter if any of you would like to apply. I, all of you who have applied, I do owe you a response to that. I'll hopefully be getting to that early in the year. But assuming we find funding companies and get some projects started... Then over time, I will increase the number of Flutter bounty hunters, and that is a process all its own. So if you're interested in becoming a Flutter bounty hunter, go ahead and fill out that survey. Now, I will say that, that Flutter bounty hunters, this is not like super declarative, is educational. Flutter bounty hunters is about doing a job. So what we're looking for here really are experienced, capable Flutter developers who understand the expectations of essentially paying programming jobs because that's what we're doing with the Flutter Bounty Hunters. And finally, we need to identify the tools that are worth building. Hopefully, when companies show up looking to fund a tool, they are therefore bringing a tool concept with them. But what we can also do is talk as a community about tools that we wish we had. And the Flutter Bounty Hunters can put together proposals for those tools and then use that as a kind of crowdfunding model to attract the companies that look at the proposal and they say, hey, you know, we didn't think about that, but that would be an excellent tool for us and we'd love to fund it. So figuring out what companies might like and proposing those tools, that's also something that we're looking to do early on. Now, if Flutter Bounty Hunters is of interest to you in any regard, here are all the places that you can find Flutter Bounty Hunters at Flutter Bounties on Twitter flutterbountyhunters.com, flutter-bounty-hunters on GitHub, the YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel for it. I don't think I have any publicly listed videos there yet, but the way that I plan to use that channel is that I will be doing a bit of professional education, talking about things like how to design software solutions or to model solutions in software. I'll talk about testing strategies. I'll talk about documentation strategies. I'm going to be putting those videos on the Flutter Bounty Hunters channel so that Flutter Bounty Hunters can watch the videos as a way of learning what the expectations are within the organization. In any event, you can find us at all of those locations. Flutter Bounty Hunters is going to be my primary focus for all of 2022. Well, hopefully well beyond 2022, but this is kind of the big project for the year for me. I really want to see if we can turn a vibrant community of tools into a business model because I am of the belief that a business model at the end of the day is far more effective than charity. The problem with charity, it's the intention is wonderful. The problem with charity is that eventually you run out of other people's money or you run out of your own money. The great thing about a business is that the revenue supports the cost and the cost builds the revenue. That's what I'll be focusing on mostly in 2022. So that's where we are coming from at the end of 2021 going into 2022. If you have any thoughts or comments about anything you've seen here today, please do go down into the comments section and let me know. If there's anything else you want to put on my radar, feel free to post it below, ask any questions. And with that, I guess I will see you at the end of Q1, the beginning of Q2 in 2022. Happy New Year's and have a great year.